Welcome to Fair Game, I'm Christine Leahy. When today's guest was just 13 years old, she was attacked by a shark while surfing with friends in Hawaii. She lost her left arm and more than half of her blood, but she survived. The movie Soul Surfer was made about her. She's one of the top surfers in the world. She's a mother of two, and she has an inspiring new documentary, Bethany Hamilton, Unstoppable. Bethany Hamilton is here today, and you are. You're so much more than a shark attack survivor but it is how a lot of people first recognize you or it's the inspiration that came from what you were able to do after that day. How often does that day come up for you? Um, I mean, really, unless someone else brings it up, I hardly ever think about it. Or the fact that it's on Halloween, every Halloween it comes up. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm like so thankful because I've healed completely from like my fear and like the trauma of that day and I just, I don't know, I live freely. You were very resilient even in the hospital, kind of going through what you did. Is there something specific that stands out to you most, even in just maybe the way that you handled it? I would definitely say the peace that I had. Like, I just think of like such, having such a crazy accident happen at the age of 13. I literally, I didn't even hardly cry. I was at peace that like God is in control of this situation even at that young age like I just I knew that it was going to be okay and I was just thankful to be alive. After the attack and after the making of Soul Surfer you became quite a celebrity but you said it's not something that you really enjoyed you, you didn't like it so much what was the lowest point for you? Oh my gosh I literally like dealing with one arm was like to me doable but becoming so well known all of a sudden and being so young and you know I grew up in this small town in Kauai I knew everyone and all of a sudden I'm world renowned and everybody wants a piece of me and a piece of my story and it was mind-boggling for me but I did see a lot of beauty in being able to share how I overcame and getting back in the ocean and bringing hope to people who maybe were going through a time feeling hopeless. And that definitely drove me to continue getting out and sharing my story and just sharing how I get through life. Who kind of guided you through that? Well, definitely my family was so key in just keeping me grounded. And I would say even being in the ocean kept me grounded. Like I would travel I remember I first went on a media tour like less than a month after I lost my arm. I don't know why I did that, but I did. <laughs> and um, yeah, during that time I would come home and just get back in the ocean and that was like my grounding place. And definitely my faith in God and just knowing that God's gonna use what seems like such a terrible thing for good and we're gonna get through this. And yeah, as time went on, like. I just continued to do what I love and kind of bounced back and overcame my fear of sharks and yeah, became even more than I dreamed I could. Did you ever at any time say to anyone like, hey, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be in the public eye. I don't want to make a movie. I don't want to do press appearances. Oh my gosh. I think half the time I would do interviews, my answers were like yes or no. Mm. <laughs> it was like so big, but I think that was also the child in me. Yeah. And, you know, I was only 13 years old and I was supposed to be like playing with my friends and at the beach and not like doing interviews and writing a book and doing publicity tours, which of course those were only for so long, but still, yeah, it was a lot as a young girl. But, you know, I had my parents and I had a youth leader from my church who was like always loving on me and encouraging me just to like stay strong and like get past it. And I saw, I found a lot of joy too in like hearing other people's stories of like them overcoming and being encouraged by hearing my own. Mm -hmm. And that definitely helped me to keep going at it. Yeah, I mean, something must have changed because you you now, you have another documentary coming out. You do do some press. You're big on Instagram. So now you kind of embraced the celebrity yes, part of it. Yes, and definitely like my new film coming out, Unstoppable, um, that was kind of an accident. An <laughs> accident? Well, like <laughs> I wasn't planning on like making a documentary. It was, it started off as like a high performance action piece. So we started off like just traveling, filming, me surfing in my element the best I could and we were planning to just make like a 
six to 10 minute short film of me just like going to town on waves. And then my filmmaker just talked me into it. He's like, we need to retell your story like even more pure with the real you. And I was like, okay, fine, we can do it. <laughs> Part of the documentary, it focuses on motherhood for you. You have two babies now. And it's something that you've said that you struggled to embrace that. Why? Yeah, it's definitely, okay, so I always really wanted to be a mom, and I knew that it was definitely going to be a part of my future, Lord willing. Um, and then when my husband and I got married, we we're like, okay, we'll hang out for five, five or so years, and then maybe we'll start to have kids. And then a year after I um, was married, I found out I was pregnant. <laughs> And I just did not feel ready for that moment. I felt like this was like this overwhelming feeling of like, I'm not ready for this. I don't want to be a mom yet. And I just had fears. And a lot of those fears weren't really like true fears that I think were... Um, what were they? Like just that I wouldn't be able to surf and that... Um, yeah, that just caring for a baby with one arm. I felt like holding like the, when they're newborn and their head's all wobbly and like just dealing with that and like changing diapers and just like life changing and like being, you know, pulled, pulled away from my husband, which isn't even true. Like I think if anything, it's brought us closer together and like more united. And um, yeah, I'm totally capable of caring for a newborn and like changing <laughs> did it twice. diapers. Yeah, now I'm like, I love being a mom. It's my favorite role. And um, just sharing life with them makes life that much more richer, I think. Well, those fears that you had, I think, are pretty normal for most women who yeah, have kids. They're not sure if they know how to take care of the baby or if they can still work and do their job. So why was it so important for you to share that now? Yeah, for me to share that in my documentary, because, I mean, being a surfer is definitely doable to continue surfing, but be a mom and dealing with, like, the postpartum body and whatnot. But I think I just, I knew a lot of women were facing those same fears and struggles, but there's, it's not talked about a lot. And so I wanted to talk about it and share how, hey, I'm like all of you. I had fears and struggles, but... I wouldn't want it any other way looking back on that time. Like, I'm so thankful for my little man and being able to be <laughs> his mom. And like, he's just along for the ride in our little journey of life. And he's so awesome. <laughs> There's a letter I found that you wrote to your son, Tobias. Um, I would love to hear from your perspective what it said. I thought it was really cute. Okay. Um, my main thing was just letting him not get knocked down by the hard things in life that's going to come his way. Because all of us face difficult times. Maybe not a shark attack, but your own version of little shark attacks in life. Maybe big ones, maybe small ones. And I just wanted to encourage him to like, hey, you can overcome these. And to not give up and just keep charging. Like getting past those tough times that come your way. He's already started surfing at just three years old. That's really, really impressive. But was there ever kind of any thought for you, like, do I let him surf? Do I want him to do this? No, I, I like more than anything hope he takes on surfing and has a passion for the ocean like I do because I want to spend a lot of time with him. And if he likes the ocean, then I get to be in the ocean a yeah. lot more too. <laughs> um, but I also want to see the different passions that he comes up with and help cheer him on in those, but I definitely hope he like really gets the surf bug so we can go surf together. How do you teach a three-year-old to surf? So with Tobias, I take him on the surfboard with me. So I'm like riding with him and he has his little floaties on and he is so hooked. He like asked me to go and- Can he stand up? Yes. He does a lot of laying down and sometimes he stands up and sometimes I stand up with him. It kind of depends on the waves and conditions we have. Mm -hmm. And um, he, but he absolutely loves it. Like he totally gets the big smile on his face. And I'm definitely trying to keep it just pure fun and like definitely not pushing him or I just like say, hey, like, do you want to go surf? The waves are going to be fun for Like we call them bias waves. So we'll be driving in our car and where we live, like the ocean is always there usually. So he'll be like, oh, there's bias waves. And it's just, like <laughs> makes my heart just like fill up with joy. There will be a day when he's old enough to understand who his mom is and what you've been through. 
Um, he might even have some questions about sharks if he's out there swimming. Oh, have yeah. you had we, that conversation with we him? We already talk about sharks and because his cousins are a little older than him and they're always like, Auntie, last time I'm to a shark. And so it's definitely gone through his mind and I'm always just encouraging him like, hey, most sharks are really friendly and if anything, they stay away from us because yeah. that is the truth. Sharks don't want to be like around people and like a lot of sharks are ten they tend to be loners. So I just remind him that like most sharks are nice and they're friends and we want to love on them and be friends to them too. I think a lot of people who had been through what you went through and it was your dream and your you were doing so well at this sport and it was kind of stripped from you, they would regret it. They would look back and say oh, they wish it never happened. You say the opposite. You say if you went back, you wouldn't have it any other way. How is that? I know, it's crazy to think that, wow, if you could just somehow choose your life path, but I don't know. I am, sometimes I'll imagine life with two arms and like it's hard not to be like, wow, that would be amazing. But at the same time, I just think of like, all the beauty and good that has come from the loss of my arm and overcoming it the way that I have. Um, and just seeing the lives transformed by just being able to share my story and like, yeah, it's really so special. And I believe that all of us have our own story and we can share it in different ways and maybe not on like a huge international level, but just amongst the people that you love and care for and like being open to share in your pain, so to say. Mm -hmm. Um, that I think it's just so worth it. 